Hello everybody and welcome! I know, I know, this is not the update you're looking for, you're all waiting for Kerbal Space Program 2, just like me! But in the meantime, the old KSP game still gets regular updates, and now it is time for KSP 1.9, also called There's No Place Like Home. This update focuses on quality of life improvements and some graphical updates to our home planet in the game, Kerbin. As you can immediately see, even in the loading screen, it looks crispier thanks to updated textures and shaders. It becomes even more apparent when you move closer to the mountains west of the space center. Usually I have some graphic mods installed to make the game prettier, but not this time. Everything you see in this video is stock KSP 1.9. Screeching past the mountains never looked prettier, at least in the stock game. There are also some part revamps in this update. The BACC Thumper Solid Rocket Booster got a new coat of paint and the old Mainsail and Skipper got visual updates with some part variants, full, mid and truss. The Skipper in the truss mount variant can now fit on 1.25 meter parts. That still does not change any of their specs or anything, so I'll probably stick to the almighty vector for many of my builds. The changelog in the readme file, always a good idea to give that a look after an update, claims that kerbals sliding on ladders have been mitigated. And they should now be able to cross from one ladder to the next more easily. I have to admit I have to play longer with this new version of the game to be able to make a real judgment on how much of an improvement that really is, but yeah, that's what the improvement list said. We also got a new drain valve that can deplete a vehicle of its resources. Let's say you've built a single stage 2 orbit vehicle and put too much liquid fuel in there and now you're out of the atmosphere, you can drain the fuel until it is a good match for the oxidizer or vice versa. Interestingly, it also kind of produces some thrust. So I thought, well, how much thrust are we talking about? And the answer is not much, of course. So don't go replacing your powerful engines with a cluster of drain valves, okay? If you own the Breaking Ground DLC, which I highly recommend because it is great, there were some changes in regards to propeller blades. From what I can tell, they now automatically detect how they should pitch, roll or yaw based on how far they are from the center of mass. This is also displayed in the context menus. I have to admit though, I was never any good with this propeller stuff, so here's me trying to fly a helicopter. It did not end well. But I have heard great things from people who are more familiar with these parts, so yeah, if you're a propeller aficionado, KSP 1.9 seems to offer you some nice things. I also wanted to use a tilt rotorcraft to demonstrate the new behavior, but the uh, Kraken was against it. And turned the still controllable port propeller into a spinning top. No case B, never change. While we enjoy this little quad rotor I made for the occasion, I can show off another new feature. You can now pause the game, turn off the UI by pressing F2 and rotate the camera around to get just the perfect screenshot. Which is nice, especially for people like me that want to showcase stuff in Kerbal Space Program. When you are in the R&D building and want to find out, for instance, where in the tech tree nuclear technology resides, you can now use a small search field in the top right corner. Type in what you're looking for and the game will highlight that on the nodes that contain what you just searched. Another new feature is hidden in the cheat menu. You can now teleport your vehicle on any surface in the solar system. You need to provide latitude and longitude for that, so basically it is the same feature that the mod HyperEdit provided for years now with its feature Ship Lander. It does work a bit differently though with how the vehicle is placed on the target 
And of course, you need to be careful how low you set the target altitude. This might get uncomfortable otherwise. And for those of you that like to speed things up, KSP 1.9 has removed restrictions on time warp. You can now zip around your favorite planet or moon at the highest time warp, as long as you're not within the atmosphere, of course. This is going to make some low carbon orbit rendezvous a lot less time consuming. Everything shown here is based on a preview version of Kerbal Space Program 1.9, there's no place like home, but I was assured that it is very close to the final product. As usual with these types of things, we can probably expect a version 1.9.1 with some bug fixes for issues discovered after the release, but as things stand now, this is the most recent version of Kerbal Space Program. This entire update feels a little bittersweet to me. KSP is now a very mature game with a solid foundation and still a massive community after being first introduced to the world in June 2011. Next year will mark the 10 year anniversary, think about that for a second. In April it will be officially out of beta for 5 years and we're still getting updates. I have it in good authority that there will be more after this version 1.9, but what is it going to be called? 1.10? Surely it can't be 2, that's already reserved for Kerbal Space Program 2, the sequel. I really hope the developers of the latter have not encountered any massive roadblocks. It's been awfully quiet around them since the initial announcement almost half a year ago. So what do you think about KSP 1.9? Is this an exciting update for you or more like a meh thing? Let me know in the comments or join me on Discord at ShadowZone Space Center where we have already gathered a fine little community of space fans. If you haven't already, please subscribe for more fun videos about KSP and space in general. And as always, thanks for watching. Goodbye.